Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. A well, highly requested track for you today. We're going to learn how to play Buried Alive by Avenged Sevenfold. So as is the case for most of Avenged Sevenfold's music, it's uh, chaos ensues from the very beginning. We have a ton of stuff to cover. Uh, from this cool little intro, uh, played by Sinister Gates, to multiple harmony guitar parts, all the rhythm parts, multiple solos so we are in for it here so we are in standard tuning so nothing fancy there at least uh before i get into the video please uh follow the channel if you haven't already and ring the little notification bell so you know when i release a new video and um thank you to all the people that have become members of the channel have joined the channel that helps me that little monthly donation really helps keep these free uh kind of song lessons coming uh constantly as you guys know all right, and uh, please check out my guitar academy too. It's at guitarlessons365.com. All right, let's get into it here. So like I said before, we're in standard tuning, and uh, Sinister Gates plays uh, in a finger style technique here for this. So this first phrase looks like this. All right, so what we're doing here is gonna pick the low A string with your thumb, and then pick the B string at the 8th fret and slide it up to the 10th. Then as you're holding that, play 8 on the high E string, then back to 10 on the B. Letting those ring. Then you're going to pull off 10 to 8 on the high E string. Then back to the 10 on the B, and then back to the 8 on the high E. Now what he does here is he reaches over and grabs real quick with his thumb the 8th fret on the low E string. It's kind of just like kind of a, kind of a little passing uh, bass line there, bass note. And that's going to lead into this chord, which is kind of a hard chord to grab real quick after you're using your thumb there. That's the 7th uh, fret on the A string, 8th fret on the B, and then the 7th fret on the high E. So you pick the A and the B string together, then up to the high E string, then back to the B, and then what you do is you change the note on the high E to this from the seventh down to five. So we have this. So with the bass note in there that you're gonna let ring. Sorry. So after you do that, you're going to slide 8 up to 10 on the B. So all together. All right, from there we go to a D chord. It looks like this. Alright, so that D chord is going to start with as just an octave. So 5th fret on the A string, 7th fret on the G. But you want to do a full bar. I mean, you want to bar at least f across uh, 5 strings at the 5th fret. So you pick the, uh, at first, just the A and the G together. Then you play the B string. So that's going to be the 5th fret there that you're holding in the bar. So that makes it a sus2 chord real quick. And then back to the uh, G string. So this. Then you're going to pull off 6 to 5 on the B, back over to the G, and then back to the B string. So that little... So we have this all together with the, the D chord. Sorry. And then we're just going to do this quick little bass line along the E string. So that, how I'm playing that is... Um, because of how I'm playing the chord before, I'm going to play the 8th fret there with my pinky and then reach and grab the 7th fret with my middle finger. Because that sets us up to play the next chord shape, which is down at the 5th fret. 5th uh, fret on the low E and 5th fret on the G and the uh, um, B string. So you pick the low E and the G together, then the B string, and then pick up the finger on the B string to the open B. Pick that. 
And then we go into this little, kind of a, more of a legato type thing, which is just seventh fret on the, you can let that B string ring out a little bit, but you're gonna be, that's just kind of pulling off seven to five on the G, slide down to four, hammer back on a five, pull back off to four, and pull back off, pull off to the, the open. All right, so we got this. So from the, the D chord. Then you gotta start over the same way. So that's the same thing we did before, except now the D section changes. So that right there, so we start the D the same way, still doing the bar at the fifth fret. Except here now, when you do the pull off, you pull off six to five, and then you go right to the G, and right there what you're gonna do is you're gonna move up two frets and play the octave off the seventh fret of the A and the ninth fret of the G. So it's the E octave, and then move that up one more fret to the F octave. Now when I did that, I went to a bar again with this index finger because then I'm gonna pick the eighth fret on the B string, and then 10. So we have this. And then you're gonna end this little uh, phrase. That's gonna be a bar at the seventh, and you're gonna play uh, seven on the A, uh, a string, nine on the B. So you pick those two together, hammer on 10, Pull off to nine and pull off to the seven that's being barred, and back to nine, and then back to ten. And that leads us to the next section, which sounds like this. All right, so that's gonna slide, start with that slide again, eight to ten, with the open A string, then play eight, ten again. Now, on the um, original recording, this is actually two guitars. So you have one this. But Sinister plays it live. He takes the, adds the bass line to it live. So that's why I'm doing it this way. But it makes it very difficult to actually do the slides too, which he doesn't really do live. Like this. So, I mean, you might want to just grab the chord. You're not going to be able to ex make it sound exactly like uh, just when it's just a single line that a guitar is playing. So, we have that, and then, and what the bass note here is the uh, seventh fret of the low E, and you're going to do this on top. So you go seven, five, seven, five on the G, and then seven, five on the D. So, Right? And then what you're gonna do is slide into the eight on the low E and the 10 on the B with those two fingers, the middle finger here, pinky here. That's the fingerings that he uses too. And then play eight, 10 on the B. So, so far. Then to that D, so you're just gonna pick the, the octave there, the D, the, the A and the uh, G string. That, and then you just hammer on five seven on the G and then back to that five on the G and then start that whole sequence over except here we have a different ending so that's so after this that's the fifth fret there on the A string seventh fret on the B and then go up to eight on the B or just let that ring still then over to the, the fifth fret there on the high E string. Then you're gonna take it to a C major chord. And it's kind of doing arpeggios across, a couple arpeggios across it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the A string with the thumb and then the B string together. And then pick the G and D, then pick B, G, D again. So. 
And you basically repeat pretty closely what everything we did with that section. Now right there, there was a little difference in that uh, D section. added bass line there. So that is that same D before, same little hammer, but when instead of going just down to the five and, and then back to start over, we have this. There's a little added bass line. So after the hammer, you're gonna lift back, back up. You're gonna pick the fifth fret on the G along with the eighth fret on the low E, and then go down to seven on the low E, and then then you start over. So with this. And then everything's the same. Until we get, instead of doing this melody, it does this. So the second time the melody is slightly different. It's just seven, eight, and then back to that seven in the melody. It's like, instead of doing that. And then it's the same C. So that whole section is slow. Now the ending of the clean intro looks like this. So that's the beginning of it right there. We're going to incorporate some harmonics, kind of classical style harmonics there. So what we're going to do is first slide into the fifth fret of the low E and then the G together. And then play three on the low E, four on the G. Then the open high E string. Then take this chord shape that you're playing and move it down uh, two frets. So we have that. You're going to pick the low E together and the high E together. Then the G. And when you pick that G string, you're going to slide it up to the fifth fret. Not the low note, though. Just, just slide the note on the G up. And when you get to that fifth fret, you're also going to hit a harmonic right there with it. Now, what, how I'm doing that harmonic is it's at the 12th fret, 24th fret, I'm sorry, on the high E string. So if you don't have 24 frets, you gotta find where the 24th fret would be and there would be a harmonic node point there. And so I got my fingertip just slightly on that and then behind it, I'm picking it with my middle finger or you can use your ring finger. So, and then he kind of slides it up the G string and then he starts over. So it's the same thing, but just a different ending here. We just now play two harmonics. So you're playing a harmonic off the, that same one we did before. And then you're playing a harmonic 24 frets above this second fret. So it'd be where the 26th fret would be. You gotta find that, so it's obviously gonna be Closer to a pickup, probably. So we have this. And there you have it. That's the uh, whole intro there. So now we have a bunch of different sections going on. The whole band enters, and we have um, a clean arpeggiated guitar part with a harmony guitar part over it. So what I'm going to show you is the under uh, the the clean arpeggios first, um, which also happens to be the verse of the song. So we can kind of knock that out now too. And then I'll show you each harmony part individually. So let's check out what's going on underneath the harmony part. Now this, the ending there, there's a couple different ways to do that. I think there's actually a couple of guitar parts there 
and one guy does a slightly different arpeggio pattern than the other. So I'll talk about that when we get there. So let's start um, with an A minor chord, and then I'll just call out the strings you're gonna pick here. You have the A, D, B, G. Then high E and B. And then there's a little, uh, little uh, note that's transitioning us up to the C, so a little moving bass line, the second fret of the A, so we have this. Then move that into a C chord. C chord starts pretty much the same way, A, D, B, G. And then here at the end, a little bit different. It's an open high E, open D, so lift up that finger and then come back down with it on the final beat. It's a, a final beat to that second foot on the D. So we have this. All together. Then we're going to go to a uh, F sus2 chord. So that's just going to be the third fret on the D, open G string, and then the first fret on the B in a high E string. So that's the D, G, B, G, then high E, B, and G. And then the last chord is built, the last arpeggio is built around an E chord. So that's just two, uh, uh, second fret of that, sorry, the D string, second fret of the G, I'm sorry, second fret of the D, first fret of the G. Pick across those D, G, B, G, and then there's a little bass line. So that's two, zero on the D, three, two on the A. So it, start over. So, like I said, I can hear another guitar, um, especially during the verse, you can hear uh, something like this. There's some higher strings being used. So, for that, if you have a couple of guitar players, which hopefully you do, if you're doing a Vintage Sevenfold, um, you'll start, the, you'll play that notes over the E the same way, the first four. But then you can just, along with the other guy doing this, you can do this kind of catch those last two bass notes, but hit the high E and the B first. And then so it was, so it. All right, that'll just kind of make it sound more like the original recording. All right, so let's jump now into our first harmony guitar part. So over that, we have a lower harmony guitar line that looks like this. Switching on uh, kind of my solo tone and the neck pickup here. So it sounds like this. So we're going to start that here at the uh, tenth fret there on the B. Most of this is on the B string. 10, 12, 8, 5. Back up to 6. And we're going to get a couple of notes on the G string, 5 and 9. So we have 10, 12, 8, 5, 6. G string, five, nine. Start over kind of the same way. So now we get here, we're gonna go six, eight, a little bit different rhythm there. Six, eight, 10. And then nine, 10, 12. 
All right, from there we have this. So we have this 10 on the B string, 13, 12, 13, over to 12 on the G. For this. Then 13, 12, 13 on the B again. Then what we can do is over to the high E string, slide into 13, 12, 10, 8. And then that's sliding to 13 on the B, hammer on 15, pull back off to 13, 12, slide down to 9. Then start over that same phrase we did before. It's up here and we have a new ending. So we had this. So that's 10 on the high E. Slide up to 12. Back to 10. Half set bend and release at the 12th fret on the B. And then that's going to play 13, 12, 10 on the B, and then 12, 10, 9 on the G, slide into that 14. All right, that goes, brings us to the verse, but we got to go back now and do uh, the higher harmony part. Um, so that sounds like this. So the same phrasing and stuff, we're just harmonizing the part we just did. So we're going to start here at the uh, 13, 15, back to 13, and then 8. So it is. Up to 10, and 5, 9 on the B. So we have this. Back to 13, 15, 13, 8, kind of the same thing we did before. But now we're going to go 10, 12, 13, 12, 13, 15. That's harmonizing the part that we did earlier. So we have this. Then it goes into this. So that's 13, 17, 15, 17 on the B. Back to 13. Then 17, 15, 17 again. Then we gotta do a slide into the 17th fret there on the high E string. 15, 13, 12. Over to Sorry. That's 17 on the B, hammer 18, pull off to 17, pull off to 15, slide down to 12. I didn't start that little pedal point thing again. From there, we're going to do this. That's a 13th fret on the high E, slide up to uh, 15, back to 13. And release at the 15th fret on the B. And then that's going to be 17, 15, 13 on the B. 16, 14, 13 on the G. 
into the uh, 17th fret there on the G string. All right, so we are finally to the verse. <laughs> like 20, 30 minutes into this thing. All right, so the verse, uh, luckily we've already done it. It's just the thing that happened, that little arpeggiation, arpeggio part that happens underneath that first harmony solo. Um, now we do have a short little pre-chorus though, which is kind of some strum chords, um, uh, strum, kind of arpeggio chords, kind of random, and then over that is some harmony lines too. A lot of pretty simple harmony lines though. So the chords underneath at the pre-chorus though look like this. So it's just a D minor to a C add nine. So it's just a C major chord, except now with the uh, third fret there on the B to a G. And when he's strumming that, he might pick across some of the strings a little bit. Okay, so, you know, you just kind of pluck out strings randomly and stuff. Or just strum it. So after you do a D minor, C, add nine, and G twice, then you go to add that E major at the end of it that takes us into the chorus. All right, so now let's take a look at the uh, harmony parts over the those pre-chorus chords here. The lower harmony part sounds like this. All right, so that's gonna be 15, 13, 12, okay? And then eight, 10, 12, 13, kind of work your way back up. And then start over, 15, 13, 12, down to nine. And then uh, 10, 12 on the beat. So all together. High harmony line that goes on over that. All right, so that's 17, I'm sorry, 18, 17, 15. Then we're gonna work our way back up the scale by starting on the 12th fret, 12, 13, 15, 17. So we have this. Start over, 18, 17. And here we kind of change the ending. We jump over to the 15th fret on the high E string, and 16. All right, and then that takes us to the chorus, which uh, sounds like this. So that is um, power chord off the fifth fret of low E. Open E power chord real quick, and then the first fret power chord. An F power chord. And then we have this minor third shape. So that is gonna be second fret on the A string, fourth fret on the low E string. That a few times, then move up to the third fret, same shape, then up to the fifth fret, same shape. So we have this. Repeat that. And 
And then after the second time, we have this quick little riff that you'll see a, a few times in the song. That's just seven, five off the A string. Then eight, seven. Okay. And then back to this same riff we did before twice. Except this very last time you hear it, the first little uh, uh, time they play this minor third shape, they do kind of a bend and release on it. And then move up and grab the other two. And then we end the chorus like this. All right, um, so that's just kind of that same thing we did before, just hitting the open E a couple times. And then that same rhythm. Uh, so that's for the first chorus there. The second chorus is slightly longer there. Um, so we get through the chorus there, we go back into the intro solo, it's just slightly shortened, so it's nothing that we haven't really covered already. Same verse, um, and you know, you know, pre-chorus or whatever. Then it gets to the chorus again. The chorus is the same that we just did, except that very, the, the very end of it, instead of just doing this once, they do it twice as long. Just repeat it, just that ending. All right, so we're working our way to the fun stuff here. Now we're going to the big harmony section that happens before the solo. So there's some crazy stuff uh, for both guitarists in this one. Before that, though, <laughs> let's do the, uh, the rhythms, the riff that happens underneath it. So if you have three guitarists in your band, you can do all of this. So here we go. Here's the riff. <laughs> to the solo. So um, so that is just kind of chugga on the uh, A power chord, then the second fret on the A, third, uh, fifth fret there on the D string. A little transition, and then bring it up to the C power chord at the third fret. So this. Then move that up to the D power chord, fifth fret. Over to the G power chord off the third fret of the low E. And then 5 7 real quick with some vibrato on the low E. So repeat that. So you start repeating it. So the second time through, instead of going down to this G, though, we go up to that same riff that we ended the chorus with. Same thing we did before, then start the riff over. On the G. Now up to E. All right, so now we have uh, what we're going to do here over this first harmony section. It would be Zachy Vengeance's part first. So it's kind of the lower harmony line. Um, so sounds like this. <laughs> So there's obviously kind of an overdub there, and he jumps back and he plays the rhythm for the solo there. Uh, so what he's doing here is we're going to start with this on the B string, 8, 10, 12, 13, 8, 5. So. Then back up to 10. 
then six, five again, so. Then work our way up, eight, 10, 12. All right, and then we kind of start over again. Now here, the ending's a little bit different. We go 10, six, and then 10, nine, 10, 12. So, All right, and now we get to the arpeggios, which are pretty simple arpeggio shapes, but they're obviously played very fast. But there's a pattern to what they're doing here. So um, first, let me just show you the, the pattern that we're going to be doing. So we have on this first arpeggio, it's an A minor arpeggio. We're going to pull off from eight, uh, 12 to 8, and then over to the 10th fret there on the B. And there's going to be an additional note to finish out the arpeggio, the 9th fret on the G. We're not going to play that uh, for the first time, five times through, though. So we, at first, we're just going to play three notes. So I'm going to play with an upstroke. Uh, you can really pick it whatever way you want to. I like to, I like to do an up and then a down. But pick, pull off to eight, and then over to ten on the B string. You just repeat that five times. And the fifth time, you're going to add the note on the G string. So remember that pattern because it's going to be the same for every arpeggio and for Center of the Gates part as well. So now we can switch this to a C major arpeggio. And we do that by just still pulling off 12 to 8 on the high E, but it's going to roll over to an 8 on the B. And then that note that we're going to play the very last time is the ninth fret on the G. So the same pattern. So. All right, and then up to a D minor shape. So this is going to be a bar across the first three strings on the tenth fret. And you're gonna pull off 10 to, I mean 13 to 10 on the B, on the high E, sorry. So you gotta really kind of do that roll. All right, so that's a little bit harder. And then we're back to the G major arpeggio. That's gonna be pulling off 10 to seven. Over to eight on the B. And then you're going to add the seventh fret on the G the last time. So all together. So then you start those over with the A minor, C. So on the D minor, after the D minor one, you're just going to jump into this, which they don't really do this exactly like they do on the recording. On the, on the live, they just kind of go... Uh, Zach Avengers is doing that. While, while Sinister Gates is doing that on top. But on the recording, it, there's a, kind of a lower and a higher harmony of this little chromatic lick that um, they use quite a bit. So the lower one I'll just add here to uh, Zachy Benjamin's part. So that's going to be, that's 12, 13, 12, 11 on the high E string. You're going to do that twice. And then take that here, starting it at the 16th fret. So you just did it once up here. And then we're going to just go up the scale. 12, 13, 15 on the B, 12, 13, 15 on the high E string into a bend. So, all right, now let's check out um, uh, Sinister Gates' uh, part to, section of that. So it's going to start with 
uh, his kind of slower harmony stuff and then into his arpeggios that'll be going along with uh, the ones that Zachy Vengeance was doing. So let's take a look at this. So that's going to start with the harmony there at the 13th fret there on the B. 15, 17, down to 13, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, Start over again. Then here, a little bit different ending. 15 to 10, back to 15, and then that same little 12, 13, 15 there. So. And then we're into the arpeggios here. So Basically, he's just playing one um, kind of inversion up of the arpeggio. So we had the A minor down here before. Now he's, uh, so Sinister's gonna be playing just the next inversion up of the A minor arpeggio, just with it. So the pattern, the picking pattern is gonna be the same. So uh, we just need to learn the notes here. So it's pull off 12, uh, 17 to 12, then over to 13 on the B, 17 on, I'm sorry, 14 on the G. So we just have. So I didn't add that note on the G string until the very end, right? We did it five times first. So just on the fifth one, then you add that as a three string sweep. And then we have the C major, which goes along with that, we have this. So that's going to be pulling off 15 to 12 on the high E to 13 on the B, uh, 12 on the G. All right, so that's the C major. And then the D minor is going to be pulling off, is going to be this one. So that's going to be pulling off 17 to 13 on the high E over to uh, 15 there on the B. So, and then the note on the G string would be the 12th fret there. I mean, I'm sorry, 14th fret on the G. So it is. All right, and from there, we're gonna go to a G. A little bit of a stretch here. We're gonna be pulling off 15 to 10. 15 to 10, yes, that's what it is. 15 to 10, and then 12 on the B, and then that last note would be the 12 on the G. So it is. All together, those are pictures. Then so start back over. So the second time through, when you get to the D minor, once again, we're going to take off and do some of those uh, chromatic licks. Um, so where Sinister will be playing is starting the one that the, at the 16th fret, you're going to do that twice. So it's the same lick we played earlier here, but it's here at the, starting at the 16th. Do it twice, and then move it up here to the starting at the 19th. And then we're going to... Climb the scale up again to 15, 17, 18 on the B, then 15, 17, 19 on the high E. And that's an overdub. That bend um, kind of hangs over as he starts the solo. Okay, so you're not going to see him do this 
going live because he needs to get back down here where the solo starts. Um, so that's an overdub, So, but we can do it here, right? So let's go back. Before we do the solo, um, the rhythm changes slightly underneath it. So I'm going to play the rhythm guitar part underneath it real quick. So it looks like this. that cool little sequence in there. Um, so we're going to start similar to the um, chorus, but just a little bit quicker. That fifth fret power chord, open E to the first fret, kind of obviously a different rhythm too, kind of more intense. And then you're going to grab that little uh, minor third shape, which is fourth fret on the low E, second fret on the A. Real quick transition chord that then jump back to that A. Now from here, after you've done that four times, we get to the kind of more melodic section of the solo. And what's going on here, we're gonna take this minor third shape and move it up one fret. So it's fifth fret on the low E and third fret on the A now. So we have this. Then what we start doing is moving the notes down on the low E string. So it's, then you just move the, to the fourth fret down on the low E, still keep the third on the A. Then the third fret on the low E, still keep the third fret on the, uh, on the A string. So. And then we go to second fret on the low E with fifth fret on the uh, A string. So. Down the F power chord. You kind of, we hear that open D sum in there too. And then that same familiar ending into this A. A power chord just kind of held at the end of the solo there. All right, we've made it um, to the fun part. Let's get to uh, Sinister Gates' solo here. So I'll play through it real quick and then we'll check it out phrase by phrase. <laughs> So, Sinister uh, Cage, uh, one of like modern metal players, he's, he's one of my favorites of just, he, he does not do a kind of a stale, here's your kind of run of the mill pentatonic licks and all that stuff. He just doesn't do that stuff. He just throws all sorts of really cool licks uh, that are, you know, really challenging, but they're still a lot of fun to play. So, I'm on the neck pick up here, and we're going to start with some tremolo picking. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to be tracing out an A minor arpeggio up the string first. So it's just 5, let me turn this to lay off, 5, 8, 12, 17, A, C, E, A. All right, now from there, we're going to go 8, um, 13, then um, 17. 16. Back to the uh, same pressure we did before. So, so far I have this. All right, from there we're gonna have 19, 20, 
19, 11. Now you can do it like I'm doing there, just taking one finger and taking it up and down the string. That's how he does it as well. So it's kind of an easy way just to not get too confused. All right, then we have the uh, sweep section, which is really cool, but requires some big stretches. It looks like this. All right, so that's gonna start with an A minor. So that's gonna be pulling off 17 to 12. So I'm gonna upstroke there, pull off to 12, upstroke in the 13th fret on the B string, and then go to the 14 on the G with a downstroke, back to sweep across 13 and 12 again. So it is. So what he does um, to kind of make this a little bit more interesting is he then reaches up and pulls off 19 to 22. And then goes back and does the arpeggio like before. Let's play this. And then he does that 19 to, 20, uh, to 12 pull off again. So, so we have... All right, so after you've done that, you're gonna now jump to this, um, it's gonna be an F major arpeggio. We're gonna pull off um, 17 to 13 on the high E, roll over to the 13 on the B, and then the 14 on the G. So, and then do a pull off to end it, just a pulling off that 17 to 13 again. And then you're gonna take that same thing down one fret to E major. So we have this. All right, so um, after you've done that one time through, we go back to that. So it starts with the, the kind of A minor notes again, five, eight, 12, 17, 12. Then we work our way down, 13, 11, 12. So it's the seven, eight, four, five. So that last uh, tremolo pick line. All right, so this last part of the solo is my favorite part of the solo. It's the one that goes along with the... Uh, so what uh, Sinister is doing over that is really cool. It looks like this. All right, so um, some crazy stuff there too. So we're gonna start here with uh, that first one. So that's gonna be seven, 10 on the uh, D string, eight, nine on the G, then eight, 10 on the B, and then eight, 10, 11, and it's kind of a slow bend. All right, then you're gonna jump up here. That's gonna be 13, 14 on the D. Then 12, 14 on the G. Then we're gonna play 13, 15, 16 on the B. And then 12, 15 on the high E string. All right, and the last one. All right, so that's gonna be 14, 17 on the G, then 15, 16, 17 on the B. Then 14, 15, 17, 19, bend and release.
down to 70. And then it's kind of a bend and release at 15, pull off to 14, over to the B string. And this, you can just kind of pull that all off. To, which is just 17, 16, 15, 13 on the beat. And then kind of go 13, 15, 13 at the very end of it. And then he ends it with some sweeps, which start with an A minor. And then on the recording, it gets a little muddy there with the, with the sweep. And live, he doesn't really do it. I've caught a couple of glimpses of old live stuff where he, he does. And it sounds like he goes into an E, e arpeggio at the very end. So what it does at the beginning. is slide into this 12. We're going to do that A minor arpeggio all the way down. So slide into 12, pull off to 8, over to 10 on the B, 9 on the G, 10 on the D, over to 12 on the A. So that's the sweep down. When you get down to the bottom, sweep back up. All right, so when you get there, you're going to do the same arpeggio pretty much starting, but except you're going to pull off from 13 to 8 instead of 12 to 8 at the beginning. And on the arpeggio on the way down, he only makes it to this you note, know, the 10th fret there on the D. And he jumps then to this E arpeggio, which starts, you're going to have to roll from the B, this, the 8th fret, I'm sorry, the 14th fret there on the A string, the B note. Roll over to 14 on the A. I'm starting the D. I'm losing my mind over here. Long lesson. <laughs> and so 14, roll to, on the A, to, roll to the 14 on the D. And then 13 on the G. And then 12, B, 12, high E. So sweep across that. And then 16th fret. And then bend it up there at the end. And that going on over that little A that they hold there. Then we get to a completely, really different section of the song, and it sounds like, uh, uh, sounds like this. So um, there's a little cool solo over this one, too. All right, so that's just chugging on the low E. And then you'll hear this little kind of dissonant thing being added. Um, those are major third arpeggio shape. I mean, I mean uh, major third intervals. So that's third fret on the low E, second fret on the A. Take that down a fret, and then... Then the last one's gonna be first fret on the low E, and then then open A, and kind of just continue that interval. Then they go into this with that minor third shape that we did earlier. last one's a major third. So that's going to be that minor third shape that we did before, the fourth fret on the low E, second fret on the A. Take that up to the third fret, and then fifth. And then back to the three, back to the five, and then this last one's going to be the eighth fret on the low E, seventh fret on the A. So they make it change it to a, uh, a mi major third interval instead of minor third, that last one. Repeat that. Back. All 
All right, now right here we have a little section that's uh, a little solo that happens over um, that riff. So it sounds, the solo sounds like this. All right, more fun stuff, huh? So uh, we are doing a, a long bend at the 15th fret on the B string. Bend again and release. Pull off 14, 12 on the B. And then the pull off uh, 15, 14. So I'll kind of same thing on the G string. Over to 14 on the D, back to 12 on the, I'm sorry, 14 on the G, gonna roll, back to 14 on the D, back to that 12, and then end it with a 14, so we live. All right, then we're gonna go up with this. All right, so uh, some big stretches here. We have 12, 14 on the D, then 12, 15 on the G, 12, 15 on the B, up to 12 on the high E. And then, so after we get there, we're gonna now jump up to the 17th fret and start a descending line. So it's gonna be 17, 15, 12. On the high E, then the same thing on the B. And then 15, 14, 12 on the G. So, so all together. And then we have kind of a, a speed burst. So what's going on there is we're gonna be playing alternate picking now, or might be economy picking. He does a lot of economy picking too. Anyway, you gotta pick it. So we're gonna play 17, 15, 12 on the uh, high E, and then the same thing on the B. So that's the first group of six notes. The second group of six notes, you're just gonna, only thing's gonna be different is gonna be 18, 15, 12 on the high E, and then Still 17, 15, 12 on the B. So we have this. And you're gonna end that lick there with the 15th fret there on the, the B string. All right, and then we get to the section that is harmonized, but for once, I'm just gonna play what he does live, which is kind of the main harmony line. And uh, he also includes like an overdub here too. He does it in his solo, so that's, that's what I did in the opening performance, and I'll show you that too, but uh, I'm not gonna do the harmony part because it's kind of getting ridiculous here. So we have this. So that little, that rings out while he repeats that phrase again. So that's an overdub. So we have, so it's 17 on the B, down to 16 on the G, back to 17, 19 on the high E, then 18. And then back to seven, I mean, sorry, 16 on the G, 17 on the B, roll over to 17 on the high E, down to the uh, 15th fret there on the uh, high E. So it, From there, we're gonna do this. That's gonna be 14, 12 done twice on the G. And then 14, 12 on the D. And then 15, 14, 12 on the G. 
So like I said, that rings out, but he, uh, live, he just does that real quick. And then back to the uh, harmony thing. Same thing we did earlier. And do a couple of bends there at the uh, 17th fret there on the high E. All right, we are getting towards the end of the song. It's a miracle. So we are now back at, coming after that solo, we have a little bit different riff. So that's just a little bit different riff there, like open E power chord, and then third fret, normal power chord, three, two, one, zero, and then one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Again. All right, so um, then what we basically are going to be doing here is, um, I, I believe you could do this with just one of those minor third shades, but um, I believe it, it's just uh, Zachy Ben just continue with that same riff, but just picking straight through in between, not doing the. He just does. And on top of it, we have uh, Sinister Gates doing this. So that's just three, seven, six, five, three. So altogether, that sounds like they're basically doing this. And if you just had one guitar doing this stuff, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, it's just kind of just... But there is that the normal power chord note is in there too, so that's why I think it's probably just going to be one guy doing normal power chords, and then a line of it. Oh, I'm sorry, it starts with... So you start with that three. Maybe they can play the full force with it. All right, and that takes us to the end of the song. Can you believe it? So this was a monster thing, but that's how we have to do that with the uh, Avenged Sevenfold stuff. There's just so much guitar stuff going on and some very unique stuff going on as well. So hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys again soon for guitarlessons365.com.